Does the Miller upside cause physics here? We're back to look at some more lens problems. So let's just get to it, right? You want to look at a diverging lens. And here actually is a diverging lens. And I don't know if you can see through it or not, but I can. And everything is upright, but pretty small in size. And that's what diverging lenses will typically do. Everything is always going to be upright because diverging lenses always produce virtual images. And for that reason, hey, you always get something that's upright. And magnification for singular interactions is always going to be um, less than one. Anyways, I'm not going to try to produce an image on a screen with this because you can't. You can't produce or capture an image on a screen with a diverging lens, the singular diverging lens, because they only produce virtual images. You need a real image such that you can catch it on a screen like we did in the previous one. So that can only be done with a conversion lens under the right circumstances. At any rate, here we go. Ready for a problem? All right, so we got ourselves a diverging lens and we are told that the size of the image is to be one third the size of the object so image size, image height, we could say h prime is equal to one third of h. Hmm. So that's kind of what, what's spelled out there. And we're told that this is a diverging lens that has a focal length of negative 30 centimeters. And we want to know where do we have to put the object in order to make that the case. P is equal to what? And then we're asked the typical things. What's the image distance? What's the magnification? What's the orientation? What's the image type? And then draw a ray diagram. This is what's asked first. Where do we have to put the object? What is the object distance? So how are we going to do this here, right? Well, we've got F. That's great. So let's start with this. We get ourselves 1 over f is equal to 1 over p plus 1 over q. But in order to get p, I'm going to need to get what q is, right? Hmm. Given that we know what f is. Where's q up here? Do you see it anywhere? And the answer is no, I don't see it specifically, but it's embedded in something up here. What's the definition of magnification? The other thing that we've got to go with is the definition of magnification being h prime over h. There we go. By definition, that is the magnification. Which in this case, if h prime is equal to 1 third h, we got 1 third h divided by h would then be equal to 1 third. There we go. Could it possibly be inverted? And the answer is definitely not. Because this is a singular um, <clears throat> diverging lens. It's going to produce an upright image no matter what. So this has to be positive here. And what's this going to be equal to? negative q over p, there we go. So what we can do with this is we can rewrite q in terms of p, because really we've got the negative q over p is equal to one third. Or I could say that q is equal to p over three, or negative p over three. So we're gonna take this right here, and again, I'm gonna write it out like this, negative q over p is equal to one divided by three, and then I can say that q is going to be equal to Negative p over 3. Negative p over 3. What can we do with that then? Well, we can take this, put it in right there, do a little substitution, and what happens then? Well, let's write this out. This expression now becomes 1 over f oops, plus oops, <laughs> is equal to 1 over p plus 1 divided by negative p over 3. Hmm. Can we mess around with that a little bit? Of course we can. Of course we can. That looks a little bit um, not a nice standard format there. So what can we write this as? Well, we can write it as 1 over p minus 3 over p. That would be perfectly fine. Which would be what? That would be equal to negative 2 over p. What does that have to be equal to? Once again, that has to be equal to 1 over f. So what do we get out of this? We get out of this that p has to be equal to negative 2f. 
P is equal to negative 2 F is equal to negative 2 times negative 30 centimeters, which is then equal to 60 centimeters. So there we go. We get ourselves the object distance. Voila! Everything else falls into place now based upon just the standard formulization of 1 over F is equal to 1 over P plus 1 over Q and the magnification being negative Q over P. So we can go ahead then and figure out well, what is Q? Well, there's a couple different ways that we could do this because we know already that Q has to be equal to negative P over 3. So we could use this or we could go up to this expression. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use the former where we've got Q is equal to negative P over 3 is then equal to negative 60 centimeters divided by 3, which is then equal to negative 20 centimeters. All right, we can make sure something. What is Q divided by P? Negative Q over P, I mean? One third. That's right. We'd have 20 divided by 60 to be one third, which is the magnification, which makes sense. All right, so that checks out. Magnification is equal to one third, and we get that this is upright. Magnification is positive. It's diminished in size. It's one third the size, one third the height of the object. And is it real or virtual? Well, we've got that the <clears throat> image is on the front side of the mirror, negative image distance that says virtual. And there we go. We've got basically everything out of a little bit. I want to say out of nothing because it wasn't out of nothing. I needed something. All right, so what's left? Ray diagram. All right, so let's try to do this nicely. The diverging lenses can be a little bit of a problem because when things are kind of packed tight. We've got an object distance 60 centimeters, a focal length of negative 30. So this one's not that bad, actually. Let's let this turn So we'll take our lens to be right there. So there's our lens, there's our principal axis. Let's take. So I'm going to try to use a ruler for this one. Let's see if I can help myself. So, so we'll take a 60. There's going to be the object, and then 30, 10, 20, 30, focal point, 10, 20, 30, focal point, and that's what we've got going on. Focal point, focal point. Object like that. We're going to end up getting a pretty small image, but I don't want to make the object too big because then we kind of get distortions. Anyways, let's just go ahead and do this ray diagram, shall we? Sure. What does the first ray do? Parallel to the principal axis and then refract such that it is aligned with or goes through a focal point. Well, let's go ahead and check this out. This one goes parallel to the principal axis. There it is. And then what does it do? Is it going to interact with this focal point or this one? And the answer is, well, if it's a diverging lens, so the, this parallel right ray is going to bend away from the principal axis. So we have to be using this one right here. So I'm using this focal point. Here's the alignment. This one goes out this way. And we already know that this is going to produce a virtual image here. So I'm just going to trace this back on this side with some nice dashed lines so that we can just have it right now. If you're doing something that you know you've got a virtual image, you may as well just backtrace the, uh, the refracted rays while you're at it. All right, the next one, what does it do? Just goes through the intersection point of the lens of the principal axis, undeviated in its path. So we've got something around like this, this one. Keeps on going. Don't have to trace this one back because, well, it just falls back on its own path. We can see that these two, these two paths, this one does trace back, but these two paths here intersect right there, right around there. And ooh, look at that. That would give us something about a third the size of that. That looks pretty good. I always want to do three rays though. Three rays for a proper ray diagram. We do the third ray. What does this third ray do? 
But the third ray goes through or is aligned with the other focal point and then refracts parallel to the principal axis. This is the one that you got to be a little bit careful with. So we've already used this focal point here. Don't want to use it again. We haven't used this one, so that's our other focal point. So we kind of put this up like this. And notice that this one's on the other side of the lens. So this ray is going to go like it's aligned with it, but then it's going to hit the lens. What's it, what's it going to do when it hits the lens? It is going to refract parallel to the principal axis. Like that. What do we do? We trace that back. And what happens? Everything intersects right there. Go ahead and translate that down to the principal axis. There's our image. Fantastic, right? Well, let's check this out. Let's make sure that things seem what they should be, at least within the realms of reason. It's upright, great. It's virtual, yes. It's about the third of the size of the object. That seems reasonable. What about the placement? It says that P is 60 and Q is then negative 20. Negative means it's on the front side, so that's we got that going for us. And is this about 20 centimeters here? I could actually take this up because I did it exactly with centimeters. And oh my gosh, this turns out to be 21 centimeters, 10, 21. But hey, I'm not perfect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm close. No, I'm not close. Sorry. It's close. It's close to being right on. But again, this is kind of a large scale here. Still was a little higgledy piggledy drawn out, so to say. <coughs> Anyways. <coughs> Oh, excuse me, getting all choked up. <laughs> this is so beautiful. Anyways, there we go. We got ourselves a nice ray diagram, correlates with the mathematics. That's what we want to make sure. If something didn't agree, something's wrong then. Which one's wrong? I don't know, you got to figure it out. But in this case, everything seems agreeable. Great. Be well, take care. That's that. I'm going to diverge on out of here. Whoosh.